what's going on everyone hope all is well happy friday for me it's a little bit of a drizzly rainy friday in new york but all is well god is good he is living and he's alive and i'm excited for what he's about to do today um coming to you again with today's devotion and i'll tell you this there's been a lot of <clears throat> back and forth with myself on this devotion um I had it recorded three times, I deleted it three times. <laughs> I figured I should wait a day, cool off, and say it in more love, right? Because it is about sin, and it's important to talk about sin. Just as we talk about love, just as we talk about grace, just as we talk about forgiveness, just as we talk about abundance, we need to talk about sin as well, right? You cannot live a life of sin and call yourself saved. In First John, it talks about that. Any man who says... Uh, he has Jesus in him, but is living in sin, especially habitual sin that first John talks about is a liar and he makes God a liar, right? Um, he here's what I want to say. Listen to this entire devotion today. Just hear me out. Hear out what I have to say in today's devotion because it's very important. It's not one of those that you just want to swipe away or listen to a portion. Listen to today's devotion, especially for, for the youth from Salvation Tabernacle, because what we're building needs to continually be strengthened. There will be areas we can improve. And I just want to say hats off to you guys. I'm very proud for my youth group. I mean, you guys, there was something going on. I didn't even have to really get involved. You all sorted it out yourself. You guys did the right thing. You guys took good sound advice and you let Jesus lead you in. From what I understand, I think the problem is resolved. At least I feel in my spirit that it is. So that's the most important thing. So congratulations on that. However, another area we have to protect ourselves and guard ourselves against is sin. You should guard your hearts, the Bible teaches us. Guard your hearts, right? When you put on that full armor of God, you're guarding your hearts. And we will do teaching on the full armor of God this year, right? But it's important to live without sin. When Jesus came into your life, he came to redeem you of sin so that you're not captured by sin anymore. The reason why he says no adulterer, no fornicator, no liar will enter the kingdom of heaven is because these are habitual sins, guys, that if you're a liar, you're probably an obsessive compulsive liar. You lie and then you tell another lie to make up for your lie. Stop that. If you are a fornicator or an adulterer, and you're, you're engaged in sexual sin, you sin against your body and your soul. It's held to a higher degree in the Bible. It's not just little old white lie sin. You sin against your body and your soul. You sin against the temple of God, which is your body. The temple of God, which is your body. That's what you're sinning against. Right? Very important to know. You want to eliminate these things from your life. Now, you might be saying, well, Stefan, why are you talking about sin today? Did something happen? Nothing really happened yet, but we're going to prevent things from happening, right? We're going to prevent things from happening. I want to tell you a quick story that will speak to many of you as to why you need to learn, eliminate certain sins from your life. And the, today's devotion is going to be a bit deeper, not longer, but deeper. There was a youth group I was a part of growing up. And in those youth growing up, uh, you know, some of the youth were doing some really crazy things um these were minors under the age of 18 and whether you're made you're over the age of 18 or you're a minor it doesn't really matter sin is still sin you should not do it period right no difference between minors it just in the eyes of the world it's held to a higher degree if you're a minor and they would take naked pictures of themselves and send it to each other take naked pictures of themselves and send it to each other and these were people that you know at the time would have been known as virgins they they kept themselves pure until a certain time they started doing those things those pictures they would text to each other and back then they had flip phones so if you all think flip phones can't sin oh trust me you, you could do a lot with that too right sin is sin and in every day and age sin is sin and people will find a way to do it and they would do these things and then it would cause the guys would cause they would fall into sins of pornography they would fall into addictions of pornography of masturbation of things they should not be doing they have to this day some of those youth have never recovered from those things and they're still bound they're still trapped by it one of them a very close friend he i mean well he was close and growing up um i know that he can't even make it on time to work sometimes because he feels compelled to do those actions before he leaves his house very sad very very sad 
because of a simple picture being sent back in the day. Hmm. One of them professes to be an atheist today has rejected God completely. Why? Because the church said you cannot do this and he wanted to do his own thing. So because he couldn't do his own thing, he completely re rejects God now <clears throat> and wants to go toward anyone or anything that would allow him to have sin in his life. And atheism, rejecting God, is one of those belief systems. <clears throat> they say they don't believe in anything, but they believe that there is no divine creator, which is completely false. That person I've even debated against, live on social media, I disproved him, but it meant nothing to him because he just wanted to do what he wanted to do at the end of the day. What was right or what was wrong had no merit or credit in his eyes. He just wanted to get away with whatever he wanted to get away with. So I tell you that story and you know, the youth that that started with, it fell onto the next generation of youth. Um, which was the, the direct generation I grew up with. And today, their lives are in turmoil, struggling to make it financially. Uh, you know, no steady careers, no stable careers, marriages that don't serve God, you know, unfortunately on the highway to hell. It's sad, guys. It's sad that you not controlling what you can do with your phone or what you do in your quiet time can destroy a life that you profess to love. If, you, if you're if you dating someone and you tell them, oh, I love you, and then you cause them to sin and go to hell, you don't love them. You love your own pleasures and your own sin. You don't love that person. If you love somebody, you would look out for their best interest. You would run away from sin. You would empower them, say, hey, listen, we shouldn't be doing this right now. Let's wait on each other. And if that person actually loves you, not just by word, but out of, out of their heart, they will wait on you. If they don't love you and they just want to satisfy their pleasures, then get them out of your life so, you don't, so you're not used. You're not used. When you do these certain types of sin, you invite certain demonic spirits into your life, certain wicked spirits into your life. There's disobedience in your life and there's curses that follow you. Curses that follow you. I want to be very clear when I talk about this, and I will be teaching on this in youth tonight, the topic of sin. But please be careful what you are doing. It's a warning to not just our youth group, but to anyone that listens to this video. Sin is something that can destroy families, destroy friendships, destroy churches, destroy youth groups. Well, Stefan, I thought, you, 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 know, you know, the church is built upon the rock that is Christ Jesus upon these gates of hell. You know, the gates of hell won't prevail against the church. Of course it won't prevail against the church of the living God. By all means, it won't prevail against our youth group. That's for sure. I'm going to make sure of that. I'll close off with this. You know, in the Bible, Paul said there was a church he was writing to and he said, I'm coming to visit you, but I've heard that you guys are doing things that not even the heathen do. He says, we have stepchildren sleeping with their stepmothers and that's something not even the people of the world do and you're doing it inside of the church in the church in the body of christ you guys indulge in these sins i'm paraphrasing but this this is the, the idea he was bringing across he says stop it now or i will personally come and kick you out of the church here's my warning i've seen generations of youth that were built upon Friday after Friday after Friday and event after event and prayer after prayer and teaching after teaching and it was built up and because those organizations allowed sin to stay inside of what they were building it was torn apart where God is sin cannot dwell and God will not tolerate sin in an organization that you want to see grow my warning is this Correct it before it's too late. Stop it before a mistake is made that you regret for the rest of your life. If you're a young lady and a male is causing you to sin and that person needs talking to, we have a great mind, a great mouth that we can talk to him with. And if they refuse to stop, we have a great fist that he can find out as well. 
And I say that with laughing and a smile, but we've had situations when we've had to physically deal with youth that act up. Me personally, I've had to do it and I'm not afraid to do it again. Um, what has to be done is we have to take a stand for the right thing. We will not tolerate these types of sins in church. We will not tolerate these types of sins in our ministry. They are an abomination unto God. They are demonic. And if you claim that you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you're saved and you have these sins in your life, I want you to think long and hard about it again. Think long and hard about it again because Jesus will not dwell where there is sin. If you're saved, he's an advocate with the Father on your behalf. He's praying, seated at the right hand of, your fa of the Father on your behalf. He's praying for you. He wants to see you do well and succeed. But if you continue to sin, that is blasphemy against God. You continue to sin because you know you have grace? No, Romans says that should not be like that. So guys, know that I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. We're going to talk about this more in our youth services. But today's devotion is on sin and it's just a warning against sin. I didn't yell too much. I didn't come across too harsh on today's devotion. I just pray that you guys get the point and apply it to your life. All right, guys, have a blessed day. God bless you. Take care.